There are many things you can say about the Japanese military in World War II, but one thing you can't say is that the soldiers of the Imperial Armed Forces weren't incredibly loyal to Japan. Some might even say they were loyal to a fault, considering that many of them remained in hiding for years after the war had ended, refusing to stop fighting for their country. So today we're going to take a look at the last three Japanese holdouts to be discovered after World War II. The first of these is Soichi Yokoi, an apprentice tailor who was conscripted into the Imperial Japanese Army in 1941. In 1943, he was transferred to Guam, which was under Japanese occupation at the time. Considering the people of Guam now have a holiday to celebrate the end of the occupation, I can't imagine it was a very pleasant time. In 1944, the American military recaptured Guam, so Yokoi went into hiding with two other soldiers. For years, he lived in a cave, hunting for food at night and using plants to make clothes. Sadly, Yokoi's two companions died in a flood in 1964, leaving him alone. At this point, after 20 years, you'd think Yokoi would just call it a day. But it wasn't until 1972 that Yokoi was discovered by two local fishermen. He immediately attacked them, which must have been absolutely horrifying for those guys, but they subdued him and he was soon sent back to Japan. Upon his return, Yokoi was quoted saying, It is with much embarrassment that I return. This phrase then became a popular saying in Japan, which is probably the only way this could have become more embarrassing for him. Yokoi went on a media tour upon returning to Japan, becoming an advocate of simple living. Which, I mean, he definitely knows a thing or two about that. He lived in Japan until 1997, when he died of a heart attack at age 82. The cave he lived in was destroyed by a typhoon, so the people of Guam built a replica nearby and then registered it as a historic place. So I would say maybe don't visit that. Kind of feels like a ripoff. Apparently, Yokoi had known the war had ended since 1952, but feared coming out because Japanese soldiers were told to prefer death to the disgrace of being captured alive. I guess there was one other way this could become more embarrassing for him. As impressive as Yokoi's run was, it pales in comparison to Hiro Onoda, who enlisted in the army when he was 18 and rose to the rank of second lieutenant. In December of 1944, he was sent to Lubang Island in the Philippines. In February 1945, American and Filipino troops took the island. Onoda and three other men fled into the hills. Over the years, the men continued their mission through guerrilla warfare, even engaging in several shootouts with the local police. In late 1945, planes dropped leaflets over the mountains, telling the soldiers that the war was over. But Onoda and his men dismissed them as fake. In March of 1950, one of the men gave in and surrendered, making it about five more years than I would have. The Japanese government, now aware that there were still three men in the hills, dropped personal letters and family pictures from planes, urging them to surrender. But those steadfast soldiers decided it was a trick and stayed in hiding. I guess they thought the American government had forced the families of three random soldiers to write personal letters begging for their return as an elaborate ruse. So they stayed in hiding, occasionally continuing their mission by getting into shootouts with the tormented people of this island, even firing at the search parties that were sent to find them. In 1954, one of these search parties actually fired back and killed one of the men, which might be the worst possible outcome a search party could have. Onoda and the remaining man, Private Kinshichi Kazuka, lived together in the mountains until 1972, when Kazuka was killed in a shootout with local police. We can only wonder if Onoda and Kazuka explored each other's bodies in those lonely 18 years. Anyways, Onoda remained alone until 1974, when Japanese explorer Norio Suzuki traveled to the island to find him. Upon finding him, Suzuki asked why Onoda hadn't surrendered, to which Onoda said he was waiting for orders to do so. I don't know how he thought those orders would reach him, but that was his demand, I guess. Suzuki took this picture with Onoda and brought it home to prove that he had found him. So the Japanese government located Onoda's former commanding officer, who now owned a bookshop, and dragged the poor guy to Lubang Island so he could give Onoda the order to surrender. On March 11, 1974, Onoda formally surrendered to the President of the Philippines. He became a celebrity and was even encouraged to run for a seat on the Japanese House of Representatives. I suppose even someone who's been in hiding for 29 years is more in touch than the average politician. Thank you. Onoda instead chose to live a quiet life in Japan until his surprisingly recent death in 2014 at the age of 91. Despite remaining quiet and denying pension money from the government, he did write a memoir about his experience titled No Surrender, My 30-Year War. 
Unfortunately, he neglected to mention that he had killed multiple people while in hiding, but I guess we all deserve our discretion. The only man to hold out longer than Inoda, at least as far as we know, was a Taiwanese man named Teruo Nakamura. He volunteered for the Japanese army in November of 1943 and was stationed on Morotai Island in the Dutch East Indies. In September 1944, the Allies overran the island, so Nakamura and several other soldiers fled into the jungle. They lived together until 1956, when Nakamura got so sick of his company that he decided he would rather be completely alone. He built a small hut in a field and even grew sweet potatoes for food. Eventually, the loneliness got to him, so he became friends with a local man named Baikoli. Baikoli? I don't know, I probably mispronounced all the names in this video. Anyways, Baikoli would provide Nakamura with things like coffee and tea. Compared to the other holdouts, this guy was living like a king. Sadly, Baikoli eventually died, but in his will, he told his son to take care of Nakamura. It's unknown exactly how authorities discovered Nakamura, but some reports say that Baikoli's son spilled the beans on his late father's secret jungle friend. Nakamura was in the jungle for so long that the island he was on had changed countries, as the Dutch East Indies were now Indonesia. So in November 1974, the Indonesian government put together a search party in which the searchers waved a Japanese flag and sang the Japanese national anthem to lure Nakamura out. It sounds ridiculous, but at least they didn't shoot the guy they were looking for like a certain other search party. The national anthem was enough for Nakamura, who surrendered to the party and was taken to a hospital in Jakarta. Now I know Baikoli's death was gut-wrenching to hear about, but the saddest part of the story is yet to come. Upon returning to Taiwan, Nakamura found out that his parents had died and his wife had remarried. Since Nakamura was Taiwanese, the Japanese government didn't think he deserved a military pension, despite the fact that he stayed in the jungle for 30 years on their orders. You really have to wonder what a guy's got to do to prove his loyalty. Fortunately, the Taiwanese government and public donated 4.25 million yen to Nakamura, about $184,000 today. Apparently, the new husband of Nakamura's wife actually offered to move out and let the couple reunite, which means the new husband is either the nicest guy in the world or the wife was a miserable bitch. Either way, Nakamura declined and instead got an apartment nearby, often spending time with the couple. Unfortunately, as if this story wasn't sad enough already, Nakamura only lived four more years before dying of lung cancer at the age of 59. The moral of the story? Ask not what you can do for your country, but what your country would do for you if you spent 30 years fighting a war that was already over. And those are the last three holdout soldiers of World War II. Which one is your favorite? I'm gonna go with either of the ones who didn't kill innocent people while in hiding. Now please consider subscribing so I don't have to enlist in the Imperial Japanese Army, because it doesn't sound like a very rewarding experience.